What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing a little bit more of my collection. I'm going to be sharing some collectibles that don't really have any specific niche within my collection. Like you guys know, I have hockey cards, I have comic books and different things like that. But these don't really have a specific category or I don't have enough of that specific category to have a whole video on that specific niche or anything like that. So there's just going to be random collectibles that I own in my collection. Let's just get right into this. Up first is a 1940s Captain America shield. It's a replica. I believe I got this from the Loot Crate Loot Vault, I think it's called. And it comes with this cool little stand here. Now this shield is actually pretty heavy. I was actually surprised with how heavy it is. It comes with a card that says uh, Certificate of Authenticity. So I'm pretty impressed with it. I didn't pay too much for it. I think it was along the $6 side. Let me just take it out of the stand here if they're dropping it. So it's actually pretty heavy. It's about the size of the palm of my hand. So bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought after I ordered it that I'm likely going to receive something that's pretty small. But it's actually pretty big. And they actually put some detail into it. So even though it's on the stand, you only see the front of it. The fact that they added the detail of the holders... To me, I thought that was pretty epic and pretty impressed with it. It is an official Marvel item. It's not something that is knocked off and something that is Loot Crate exclusive. At least I don't think it's Loot Crate exclusive because it does say official Marvel item. But this is definitely something that I'm happy to have in my collection. The next item here is a stone carving. I actually have two of them, but I'm going to show you the smallest one here first. And it is a little turtle. I got this at... I believe a yard sale for like 25 cents. It is a little heavy. That's how I know it's stone. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not sure what stone it is, um, but it has some cool colors to it. It's cool texture and whoever carved it knew what they were doing. They used the appropriate tools and I love getting things like this. If I could find more and have more things, I like to me, I like the white stone a little bit better than the black stone carvings that you find because to me they show a little bit more detail and they look to me at least a little bit better but a little turtle here and I also have a bowl now this bowl is way heavier and way bigger than the turtle this I actually only paid a dollar at a yard sale for so the fact that I got a small little one of a turtle for 25 cents and then a different yard sale. I think I picked this one up first actually, but at this yard sale, I got this big heavy one for $1. So like I said, this is heavy, but the amount of work that they put into this is pretty impressive. So it wasn't the same yard sale or anything like that, but definitely put some work into it. The design of it, the stone that they use, that it has this, um, I'm not really sure the, the design of the stone. To me, it looks awesome. They did really great work, great details in the bowl. So to me, I think that looks awesome and the coloring looks great and the weight of it is actually pretty heavy. I actually got this appraised for between $25 to $50. I only paid a dollar for it. I don't have plans on selling it, but the fact that it's worth $25 to $50 to me is pretty cool when you only pick something up for a dollar and it has a lot of weight to it, which is why it is closer to the $50 range, at least from what I was told. The next item is something that I picked up. I think it was $10, uh, again, at a yard sale. But it is a, according to the bottom here, and I looked it up online and it says the same thing, a 1931 Hawkeye uh, bank truck. So these are something, it actually has a lot of weight to it. The only reason why I didn't think it was 1939 is because the uh, plastic around here and the headlights is, like I said, plastic. So I didn't think that was to that era, but according to what I found online and appraisers, it is real. It is from 1931. So to me, that's pretty epic. My mom works at the craft uh, factory, so that has a cool backstory behind it. And also the fact that on the bottom here, the part that you can take out to take the coins out of it because it is a bank. It actually has the little key, which usually gets lost or misplaced since it's so old. So usually you don't have a key or you don't have the stopper as well. But the fact that it has a key and it works, I'm going to try to take it out here. 
and it works. That's pretty epic. So that's why I picked it up because it's all there. It's not missing any parts and it works and it has the key, which is usually lost. So that is a great addition to my collection right there. The next item is a Jelly Belly Jelly Bean Machine. This is something that I found. I think this was only $8. It is one of the smaller versions, but the story behind this is I used to have one of the really big cast iron ones, but it got knocked off of a shelf thanks to my cats and the glass broke. And without even knowing, my parents decided to just get rid of it. So they threw it out in the recycling and they got rid of it. And then a couple months later, somebody was getting the giving away the uh, glass bulbs for free. So I would have been able to have a replacement, but they already got rid of it and I didn't know they did that. So when I found the smaller version for $8, the fact that it's a Jelly Belly machine, which uh, as far as I can tell online, they're a little bit more rare. It is the traditional red, which is what I really would have wanted anyways. I do see some ones that are kind of like a black steel. They look cool, but the red ones to me are more authentic and they look special. And the fact that it doesn't just say Jelly Belly on it, which some just have the Jelly Belly sticker or the Jelly Belly globe, it is actually all over the um, machine mechanic here. So this is something that I really treasure. It is something that I like my collection. I'm not really sure how rare it is. I'm not really sure what the small Jelly Belly one is worth. It is pretty heavy. It's not as heavy as my cast iron one, but I also remember it being twice the size. So either way, that is something special for my collection. And the last item is something that is near and dear to my heart. It is from what my grandfather used to always tell me as a World War II lighter. This is a trench lighter and how it used to work, it doesn't work now. Um, the only thing I'd be able to do would be, I think the bottom part screws off. I might be wrong on that. The bottom part screws off, I'd have to replace this in here, which is where your lighter fluid would go, because that is all basically um, old and it won't really work right. Um, I don't think, I think the top's good on it. Um, but the, also inside, if you can see here, the wick is really worn out and dried and cracked and it likely wouldn't light even if I put lighter fluid in it. So I would have to replace some of the parts, but I like the old um, kind of the way it sits. I don't want to do anything to it. I don't want to uh, kind of, I kind of want to preserve the age of it, if that makes sense. But how it used to work is you can imagine in World War II, if you were a smoker and you went to go and light a cigarette, the enemy from far away would be able to see your lighter if you were to light it. So to combat that, they made ones like this where the if you push down on it, the flames inside, but on the back here, you cannot see the flame. So basically you would light your smoke like this. You will not see any flame. No flame is showing. So that is pretty genius back then for them to make something like this for people that smoked back in the war. I think that is pre pretty genius. But yeah, my grandfather gave me this. So like I said, it's supposed to be a World War II trench lighter. I'm not 100% sure if this is exactly World War II. This may have been after World War II. It might have been before World War II. I tried to look up this design online. It doesn't have any real names on it, um, no real markings on it. And to me, it does look pretty old given the age of the wick and everything inside. And also just want to mention the little gear in the back that basically when you push down on it, it generates the friction to light the wick. Um, it looks like it's corroded and seized. So this would take a little bit more work to get into working order. So I would personally just rather see it in this condition and have it kind of like the age it is. Um, keep the age, I guess, if that makes sense. But this is definitely something that my grandfather gave to me. So I definitely want to keep and I'm really happy that he did because I remember being a kid in his little uh, workbench finding this and he used to tell me the story every time that I used to pull it out and say, hey, what's this again? And he used to tell me the story every time. So that's how I remember the story of um, him telling me it was his dad's from World War II. 
And to me, that is such an iconic story and it means a lot to me. A couple years ago, he decided to actually give it to me for my birthday. So to me, I love the meaningful things like this that he does especially. So that is my favorite item in my collection. And I'm also a history guy. I kind of like uh, the history of World War II, the history of the war and different things like that. So this is the only war item and the war relic that I have. So that's why it also means a lot to me as well. So these are just some random collectibles that I have in my collection. They don't really go with any niche. I don't really have a lot of these stone carvings. I don't have a lot of the banks or World War II items. So that's why I decided to share them all in this video and make it kind of a random video because I don't have enough items to make one specific video on one specific niche, if that makes sense. But still, I hope you guys did enjoy me sharing a little bit more of my collection and sharing what I own. I will leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.